Mixing vocals can seem impossible if you're new to it. But never fear because even if you're brand new to music production, there's an easy process you can follow to get some great sounding results. And yes, that's what I'm going to show you right now. I'll break down vocal mixing from the start to finish in a way that anyone can understand. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to take your vocals from this if I want flash, paint it white, to this. Professional. Let's get started. The first thing we'll need to get right for some professional sounding vocals starts with the recording of the vocals themselves. If we start with a turd of a vocal recording, we're going to end up with a turd of a final product. Now, I generally consider recording vocals a separate step than mixing, but it's important enough that I should mention it in this video. I won't cover the full recording process in full detail because I've already made a video on that that you can watch right up here. But here's a basic overview of the recording process and some of the most important aspects you should probably be following. Record at the proper level, or in other words, don't clip and don't record too soft. Number two, use a condenser microphone rather than a dynamic microphone. Number three, use a pop filter. Four, record around four to eight inches from the mic. Number five, Record in an acoustically treated room, very unlike this one I'm in now. If you aren't in an acoustically treated room, you can throw a blanket over your head that can help out in a pinch. And then lastly, maybe the most important is to actually record a passionate and a good vocal performance. These steps are extremely important. If you take away one thing from this video, it's the fact that most people get their recording very wrong. You can't put glitter on a piece of shit and expect it to shine or smell good. I go into all of these points into way more detail in that video I mentioned. You can check it out in the link below. But now let's move on to the next step. Okay, assuming you've got a good vocal, we're ready to actually edit our recording to work in our song better. I'll be using an editing in Logic Pro to demonstrate this, but this will work in any DAW, and that goes for the rest of the video as well. You probably skipped the recording step, I know you did, but trust me, it is that important. Probably the most important thing you can do in this entire process. Now we are going to edit the vocal a little bit to get it to sound more evenly leveled and more on pitch. Let's start with balancing the volume. In a modern song, you can hear every single word clearly. If one word is too quiet and unclear, then people are going to be more confused than a chameleon in a bag of Skittles. You can quickly visually assess the volume of your singing by the size of the waveforms on your recording. Big waveforms like this equal louder parts and small waveforms equal quieter parts. Both of these extremes can rock the boat enough to create problems down the line. We're looking for a nice even spread of waveforms. Nothing too big, nothing too small. We can change this in a couple of ways to even out these peaks and valleys a little bit more. The first way would be by automating the gain with a gain plugin. You can find that by clicking A on your keyboard and then dragging using the volume, blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, we're gonna bring up this part, boo, doo, boo. No, that's not the way I usually do it. Get rid of all that. There are even some plugins that will do this for you automatically and save you some time, but I don't really do that either. I am a big visual guy and what I like to do is I like to see my waveforms actually growing as I edit them. To do that, I'll hold down command and make a cut of the part that I want. To do this, I wanna have my marquee tool selected in my secondary tool slot. I'll click on this part here, open up the inspector region, and then I can drag up my gain as I need to for each individual word. I tend to keep this pretty light and only use it on the words I absolutely need to, making sure I can hear them in my headphones. Let me go through and edit this particular vocal to show you what I mean. Notice that I'm only editing the words I absolutely need to. The more editing you do after the recording, the more likely you are to fuck something up and the more likely the voice is to sound Weird. Keep it gentle. And if a word still sounds too muffled or too quiet even after adding some gain, then go back to the part of the video which you probably skipped in the first place and record it again. Just saying. Once the vocal is smoothed out in volume, we can add our first plug into the chain, pitch correction. Yes. For most modern songs and pro vocals, we'll need pitch correction. If your vocals are already sounding like nails on a chalkboard, then this is essential. And even if they sound pretty decent, I still think it's essential. Really, the only person I'd suggest that can skip this is if you sound like Adele. And Adele, if you're watching this, how's it going? How's the fam? Thanks for watching. <laughs> We're just gonna keep it simple here. I'm gonna use some auto-tune. I'll go into pitch, auto-tune pro. Most important part about pitch correction is nailing the key down, which if you don't know how to find, I made a video on that right up here. Wow. 
Would you look at that? And now after pitch correction, we're on to EQ, which will be a lot of the sound shaping that we'll be doing. EQ is a lot like cleaning up your dirty room. Your voice without EQ is like your room with all of your clothes on the floor, cluttered and in the way of everything else. I can show you how to clean up your voice to fix that problem, but you're gonna have to figure out how to clean your own room on your own. Maybe, maybe a different channel. There's generally three things I'm doing on most vocals I work with when it comes to EQ. First thing is I will use a high pass filter to get rid of all of the low end. I'm just going to put this on till I hear it taking away the beef of the vocal. And I'll put it so it's barely noticeable. Another thing I'd like to do is get rid of that low end clutter, getting rid of the clothes on the floor by adding in a cut around 300 to 500 Hertz, sometimes a little bit higher. This will be pretty subtle. And then the last thing I like to do is boost up the high end with a high shelf starting around 6K, 8K. There's also one more important part of the EQ that you need to know. And I call this the honky tonk radio zone middle. Basically, if I add in more one to 3K, I'm gonna be able to hear this a whole lot more in the mix. Yes, I'm adding volume, but if you volume adjusted for this, it would still happen the same. That's that honky tonk radio part. The more I take that away, the more that vocal blends into the background. We'll be playing with that more in a second, but that's just something to note. And yes, the honky tonk radio zone probably needs a renaming, but in that's just what I came up with right now. <laughs> so here's our basic EQ. We can always come back and adjust this later. And even though we've already smoothed out the volume of this vocal, we're gonna wanna take things up a notch by adding in some compression. You can think of this first editing of the vocal as cutting out the basic rock shape of the statue. And then you can think of compression as chiseling the actual David himself. Luckily for us, our vocals don't have little marble weenies to worry about. For compressors, I like to use one type in particular for the coloration it adds to vocals. It's called an 1176. You can find it in Logic under Studio FET. I'll dial it in as follows. I like to set a four to one ratio. I like to have a fast attack and a fast release. I'll dial in the threshold until I'm getting around negative five. I'll also turn off auto gain and add in gain to taste. Already sounding way better. Then after I've locked in that first compressor, I'm going to command drag this compressor down. Oh, shoot. Then I'm going to option drag this compressor down and duplicate all of its settings. Now I have two compressors doing pretty much the same thing. I'm gonna adjust this second threshold so that it's only getting about five seconds. I might increase the attack, increase the release just to get any of those peaks, maybe even get a little bit less gain reduction, adjust the makeup gain to taste. And after those settings, we've got two Statue of Davids. Amazing. Double compressors generally help to take the load off of one single one, and it will help it to sound more natural in the long run. It's kind of like having two roommates split the rent. Yes, you can try to pay for the entire place yourself, but the chances are you can't because you're trying to be a music producer. And there we go. The vocal is sounding much more dynamically consistent. That's producer speak for sounding the same volume throughout. You can really test out these dynamics by playing the vocal with the entire song and then turning it way, way down. You want to turn down your song so that you can barely hear it and you're listening for if you can actually make out all the words. If you can't hear any of the words, you can go back and adjust the gain from step one or you can dial in your compressor settings a little bit harder. It's always going to sound better to start from the beginning with the gain though rather than adjusting the compressor settings too hard. I'll demonstrate that by adjusting this master volume fader to show you what I mean. Sounding pretty good. I can always option click this to go back to normal. We'll adjust the overall volume of this vocal in the last step, which is by far the most important. But for now, we're sounding pretty good and we can move on to the next step. Now we've got our vocal sounding nice and crispy from EQ and we're able to hear every word from the gain and from compression. But wait, there's a problem. Our vocal is sizzling. It sounds a lot like an angry cobra in some parts. Modern vocals need some airy high end to shine through a mix, which is why we boosted that EQ in the first place up top. But some words already have way too much high end, like the words that have S. S. This is called sibilance. 
And if you leave it on your tracks, you're going to have to go to church and repent for committing a deadly music production sin. Bullets. That one sounded better in my head. But if only there was a way to get rid of those S sounds that put Sizzler out of business while keeping the rest of the high end. Spoiler alert, there is, and it wins the award for most straightforward plugin name, the de -esser. We'll put it on our vocal and we'll dial in the settings to get it to work. Honestly, our vocal right now isn't that sizzly, but I do want to talk about this because I hear it a lot in amateur recordings. DSing is one of the easiest things to use. All you have to do is set in the settings, A, B, the part that you're worried about, and then see if it makes a difference. This is really subtle, but you can hear those S being slightly tamed. If you DS too much, you're going to sound like you have a lisp like Mike Twithen. Twith, Twith, Twithen. Now you finish up the bones of your vocal mix. This is about the minimum amount of work I would do on a lead vocal to get it sounding adequate in the realm of professional music land. And if you're liking this video, stay a while. Hit subscribe. Kick your shoes off. We make music production content like this every single week. Now I'm gonna go over some optional techniques to skyrocket your voice from plain and bland to utterly divine. It's time to add some depth to your vocals. With the help of some of the techniques I'll show you, we're gonna change it from a dry studio recording to a massive heavenly hall. To do this, we'll want to add three ingredients, reverb, delay, and most importantly, love. I'm just kidding. The last one is layered vocals. And yes, it's that important. For reverb and delay, I recommend making a bus track and sending your vocals to that track. To do so, you can open up the mixer window, click here, click bus, and then click the open bus slot. In this case, on bus 10, I've added my reverb with the mix at 100%. This is a bus track, so I want the mix at 100. I'll use this default setting here for my voice. I'll do the same for delay. Make a track here, add in delay. I'll add in H delay, 100% wet. Then we can adjust each of these parameters until it's sitting nicely in the mix. We don't want it too washed out like an 80s t-shirt, but we also don't want it too dry like my sense of humor. A nice in-between is what we're after. Now let's put the cherry on top of our depth sandwich by adding in vocal layers. This tip is a game changer. When you record the same singing part multiple times and then play them back together, the small differences between your vocal performances make your vocals thick without a K, like BBL thick. Check out what I mean without any plugins at all. I already have these recorded. I have one panned hard left and hard right. And now I'm going to copy the channel settings by going here, going to copy channel strip setting. I'm gonna click on both of these by shift clicking. I'm gonna click here and I'm going to choose paste plugins only. Now I'm gonna add in the sends right here, bus 10, bus 11. And we have the exact same settings we did with our original vocal. I'll add in some reverb and add in some delay. This is what they sound like. If I want black still, painted white, Take this down a little bit. We can just use the same processing we've worked so hard to create and duplicate them onto the track settings twice. Then we can pan them hard left, hard right, and bada bang, we got something good. Now your vocals have got legs and a big old thick booty. It's crazy how much better this trick can make voices sound sometimes. Check it out before and after. If I want black still, nice and boring. Sounds like a record. But also keep in mind, you might only want to use this technique for the choruses or the more energetic parts of your song or do, do whatever you want. Now that we got some crazy sounding vocals, it's time for even more creative effects. I'll go over two common ones now. Another thing to note is you can add either of these plugins to the main vocal or even the background double vocals to experiments. Sometimes I'll add the effects only to the background vocals so you get a nice subtle change. Experiment with what sounds good to you, maestro. The first one I'll show you is saturation. And I'm going to do this by using an overdrive plugin. Saturation feels a lot like your vocals are going through an emo phase in high school. It adds some emotion and grit, and it changes the sound slightly. Here's how it sounds with it on. Emo. Feel free to experiment with saturation and get a good sound. The next one I want to show you is the flanger, which is under modulation. 
mono to stereo. The flanger will help spread out your vocal across the stereo spectrum. If you don't have these multiple layered vocals, it can help to fill in the sides of that stereo spectrum. No, it's not a replacement for recording multiple takes, but it can help. I personally think flangers sound like a jet racing down the runway. And no, that's not a joke. Check out what I mean. Stay right. I A unique sound. I also use this if I'm putting on a lead vocal with a very subtle mix. If I want black shoe. Cool. Let's add in the background vocals and hear with it everything. If I want black shoe, it white. All right, now the moment we've all been waiting for, or at least a few of you have been waiting for. Now I'm going to show you how to blend these vocals with the rest of your track. I've done this quite a few times and I've got some really good tips for you to share to make it easy. The first thing we'll want to do to get our vocals to sit right in the mix is to slap a limiter on. I've had a limiter on this whole time for YouTube purposes so you can hear everything, but this is actually going to make it mixing way easier. The reason is because this limiter is going to make it sound more similar to the final master. I'd recommend shooting for somewhere in the realm of negative 10 LUFS. Right around there sounds good. Just push the limiter until it gets to that point. The limiter will add some slight compression to everything in the mix. And because our vocals are the loudest thing, they are gonna get turned down the most. That means your mix without a limiter is gonna sound a little bit different than your mix with a limiter. So we might as well just save ourselves the trouble by throwing on a limiter. The next spicy tip I have for your vocals to sit oh so nicely in the mix is to use a sidechain multiband compressor. A wah wah wah. Also, this tip isn't required, but I thought I'd share it because I use it a lot. Let me explain. A multiband compressor is like an EQ, but only for certain parts of the frequency spectrum. And a side chain just means that we're going to link our vocal to activate the compressor to turn it on. If that makes about as much sense as a vegan at the Hunter convention, then just bear with me. To set this up, we're going to need to route our tracks in a certain way. In other words, send them to a different thing. You can see the routing at the bottom here. A lot of these are already going to stereo out. We're gonna select all of our instrument tracks right now. We're gonna make this bus to bus 13, and then we're gonna name this bus instruments. I've actually already done this here, but I'm redoing it so you can see. Now, the next step is we're going to add in a multiband compressor. I'm using the one from FabFilter, and it's probably my favorite to do this. Then we'll change sidechain to our lead vox right here. We'll add in something right around 1K to 3K. This is kind of that honky tonk range that I was talking about before. We'll go to expert, we'll go to external so that we make sure we're using our side chain as our trigger. And you'll see that as our vocal sings and crosses the threshold, that will slightly dip down. Now I'll take this range down because we're using it kind of as a master. We want this to be really subtle. We'll also take the attack down and the release up a tad bit. This is going to give our vocal a spot to carve out and that honky tonk mid range part I was talking about before. Another thing I want to do is create a bus with all of my vocals. So I'm going to route them all to bus 14. I'll change it here, Vox. And now I can adjust all of the volume of my vocals at once. Go, really good. If I'm cutting out this instrument part here, oftentimes I'll take my vocals down to compensate for it. Even though it's complicated, just rewatch that part until it makes more sense. I guess. It also segues very nicely into my third tip for perfect vocal mixes, which has to do with that honky tonk zone that I've been describing. You thought we were done with that ridiculously stupid name? Guess again. I'll hop into our Vox bus right here, so I'm affecting all of the vocals at once. Notice, as I bring out that mid-range, you're going to hear it pop out more. As I get rid of it, you'll hear it blend in more. Check it out. I can use this to my advantage to help blend things in better. This is a really good tip to just experiment with what works with your particular song. I'm gonna take out a tad bit. 
Tip number four to make sure that your vocals are perfectly mixed is to mix them at a low volume. I went over this tip a little bit earlier and I also made a full video that explains this with a sweet 3D graph that can help you mix, which you can watch right up here. But the concept is this, turn your monitor way down until you can only hear the words of the song. The only three things that you should be hearing at this really low volume should be the snare drum, the kick drum, and then most of the lyrics. That snare drum and the kick drum should be popping their head over the lyrics themselves, but this a good gauge to determine how loud your volume should be. Let's take the master out down and do that same thing. This is our Vox bus, we'll take it up. Take this back up to normal and while it's at full volume. But even with all of these sweet ass tips, there may still be parts that need a little bit of loving. And that's where my final tip comes into play, which is to automate your vocals. Automation is just adjusting parameters over time. It's that easy. The most common thing to automate is volume. You can adjust this as you might normally would by adjusting the volume, but I highly recommend not using automation for volume itself. Instead, I would add a gain plugin under the utility feature here and then automate that. This will allow us, we'll go in here, we'll now automate the game. This will give us the same results as before. We'll be able to turn it down, turn it up as we want to, but instead it won't lock the fader. So if we want to change it later, we can. It's going to save you a bunch of time. Just trust me on this one, automate gain, do not automate the volume itself. Another really good thing to automate for vocals is the reverb and delay tails, which you can do at the end of each individual phrase. In this case, I might do it on the bus itself. So all of them end up going through. You can get really, really granular with this and you can get very specific with some of the choices you make, but this vocal is probably 80, 90% ready to go and damn it, I'm ready to move on. And after all of that sweat and tears and blood and other bodily fluids, we've got a finished vocal track. But before I play you the before and after result, go comment down below which part of the video you found the most helpful. Was it my bad jokes? Was it my insightful tips? Was it my witty banter? I'd love to know. And here's that final comparison. use these techniques on your own vocals. If you like this video, you should also go watch this one I made right up here on how to get a vocal sound like Tame Impala.